first I'm going I'm going to start recording this meeting and we'll begin the meeting now. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Veronica Oplins. I'm a co-chair of the Center City Residents Association Zoning Committee, and we'll start our meeting now. Welcome to the Center City Residents Association Zoning Committee. The CCRA is a 75-year-old civic non nonprofit civic association. As a nonprofit, we encourage everyone to become a member, which can easily, easily be done through our website. There are several benefits to being a member, one of which is being notified of all the proposed zoning changes within our area. The CCRA is the re recognized registered community organization, RCO, for our area. Our boundaries are from South Street to JFK Boulevard and Broad Street to the Schuylkill River. Our committee works as follows. First, applicants are to present. We ask applicants address the specific refusals or referrals. We ask for no interruptions as applicants give their full presentation. After the presentation, the zoning committee will have a chance to ask questions. After the zoning committee's questions are completed, we open the meeting to the community. When addressed, we ask that you unmute yourself. We ask that you state your name and address. Uh, we ask that you keep your questions succinct and to the variants being discussed. We also ask that people not repeat others' questions. If you agree with someone's position, you're welcome to simply state that you agree. If there's a spokesperson for the neighbors, we ask that this person stand and speak for the group. After we hear from all the applicants and listen to all the community comments, our, community, our committee meets in closed session. The committee votes in three ways, oppose, not oppose, or not oppose with provisos. CCRA never votes in favor of any application. Our decision is emailed to the council person, the ZBA, and the applicant, and also posted on the CCRA website. Importantly, no matter how we decide, if you are concerned with a project, we strongly recommend that you attend the ZBA hearing. This is the best way to make your concerns, concerns known. The CCRA zoning committee cannot express the neighbor's point of view. Only a property owner or a grieved individual may express their personal concerns to the ZBA. And with that, we will go ahead and begin our meeting. Now we have five applicants, as you know, and we're going to go in the order that they were listed on the agenda. So I'm going to ask that this, uh, for this meeting that we have a very focused, efficient meeting. So I've asked all the applicants if they would to present uh, in really uh, direct, efficient manner. Uh, really I can uh, confirm that they've submitted all the required materials so they can focus just on the presentation. And I'm going to ask all uh, of the members of the public who are here to be very focused in their questions, have, quote, have questions focused exclusively on zoning issues. Please do not repeat another person's point of view or another person's question. You can simply say you agree or disagree and so that we can hear all five cases in a fair way for all five. So you may have seen the agenda and the agenda, and I'll read the order of the five cases on the agenda and we'll follow that order. First will be 2104 Naudane Street. Second will be 25 South 21st Street. Third will be 25, excuse me, 1513 to 1517 Pine Street. Fourth will be 2121 Delancey Place. And fifth will be 1746 Lombard Street. Now, just so everyone is clear, we do need to get through all these cases tonight. And that is because uh, I've communicated with all, with all of the property representatives and they feel that they have a time press, uh, that they can't be pushed to July and we already have a pretty full July meeting. So we're going to be focused. Um, so now uh, we will begin with our first case and that is 2104 Naudane Street. The application, um, and I'll read now uh, the application with the refusal. The application is for the complete demolition of an existing attached structure, for the erection of an attached structure with one accessory surface parking lot and one non-accessory surface parking lot, size and location per plans, for the use as single family household living with accessory parking and for the use of offsite non-accessory parking. And the refusal is, the maximum build height allowed is 38 feet, whereas the proposed height 
of 41 feet, six inches is prohibited. And this was, a, this was opposed when first presented on April 26, 2022. So now I'd like to turn it over to the representatives of 2104 now, Dane. Thank you very much, Ms. Eplins. This is Sean Whalen from Vintage Law here on behalf of 2104 Nadine. And uh, I, I understand the time crunch, so I will be as brief as possible and certainly open to any questions for anything I blow over. The, uh, as Ms. Eplins stated, this was previously presented. Um, we heard all of the issues and concerns that neighbors had. Hopefully you're seeing a, a, a rendering of the revised proposal. Uh, and we went back to the drawing board and, and really tried to, uh, to address the review. So is everyone, I can't see what you guys are seeing. Is everyone seeing a, a street view of Nadine? Yes, we can see your presentation. Thanks, Sean. Okay. Um, so then I will go here. So again, just a little bit of context. There's the, uh, roll top garage door, single story attached garage door. This is on Naudane uh, with a curb cut. The garage, uh, existing garage and curb cut will go away as part of this proposal. Um, very quickly, you see here 2104 Naudane fronts on Naudane Street and goes all the way back to Rodman Street. It is zoned RSA 5 and we are proposing one single family house. Again, just some site context for everyone. Uh, and here's uh, that first view that I was showing everyone with the existing uh, roll top garage. So again, here's a site plan. This is the extent of the development of the garage right now. Here's the back. There's a small accessory structure that will also be uh, demolished. Uh, here's the plan for the new house. Uh, in depth, it'll be similar to what was already there and adjacent. And these are the two rear parking spaces that are at issue. Uh, so again, here looking at the left, you see a revised massing and overall height. Uh, we have revised the street frontage height and the cornice line to match the adjacent properties. Uh, this is approximately 33 feet in height uh, down from the, uh, the 41 and a half feet that was previously uh, shown. Um, so what we did here, you can see it set back. There is a fourth floor remaining. However, it was set back 10 feet. And so if you are down here, even on the opposite side of Naudane, uh, you are unable to see any of the additional fourth floor because uh, it's here. So we are proposing 33 feet at the frontage even though a, uh, the zoning code provides for 38 feet with a three and a half foot parapet. So it provide, the zoning code provides for a 41 and a half foot uh, street frontage. We are lowering that to be uh, in line with the other properties on the street. Uh, again, this is a proposed rendering of what you would see, uh, simply looking like every other house uh, filling in on the block, you'll have similar window heights This is a level of shadow study. I will go quickly, but I'll just say that you know, the proposed version uh, greatly minimizes any shadows, essentially down to zero, because we've uh, so drastically reduced the height at the street frontage. We have revised proposals and plans if you want to see them. And uh, really, that's it. So the, the main point is we saw what everyone, you know, we heard the issues that everyone had. And really, you know, we had overwhelming discussions about height and uh, having 41 and a half feet height at the, at the street frontage. Uh, we've reduced that and we have removed all of that height at the street frontage, as you can see. And instead, what we've done is we have maintained a fourth floor uh, and that fourth floor is now set back 10 feet. So at no point in time would it be uh, visible from anywhere on Naudane Street. And with that, I'm happy to be as quick as I can and, and just take any questions that anybody has. Thank you so much. And thank you for a focused and very clear presentation. Uh, what I'll do now is according to our procedure is I'm going to go through the committee members and I'm going to ask the committee uh, members if they have any questions and then we'll open it up to the public. 
So I'm just going to go down in the row that I have your names written down. Janice, do you have any questions? No questions. Okay. Uh, Evan. No questions. Uh, ben W. No questions. Charles. Did you reach back out to the, to the neighbors and were there any oppositions? Uh, we have had uh, numerous opportunities to reach back out to the neighbors. Um, I would let, uh, that was not done by me. So if we want to go there, I'm happy to have uh, the uh, developer uh, discuss what he was talking about. But my understanding is this was generally well received as a change. Uh, but I wouldn't want to uh, put words in anyone's mouth. So if you want to go there, no, uh, no. happy to extend the presentation. No, I, I, that's just an exact question. We'll let the neighbors speak. Thank you very much. Thank no you. Questions. Thank you. Uh, ben Z. Ben Zuckerman. I was muted. No questions. Robin. No questions. Flora. No questions. Bob Lane. No questions, thank you. Steve Rubin. No questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to now open it up to the members of the community. If you would like to uh, ask a question or voice an opinion, can you please raise your hand? Uh, and I'll just, I see some hands going up and I'll, I'll, I'll go through the list in the order that I see hands go up. The way you raise hands uh, or raise your hand on this in this feature is at the bottom of your screen, there should be a reactions button. You click the reactions button and you can raise hands. Um, so if I can, apologies for any mispronunciations and if I can ask you to state your name and also your uh, address for the committee. Uh, Gail Gismondi. Can you um, hear me? Okay, um, I am Gail Gismondi, 2106 Naldane Street. I'm the next door neighbor on the west side. Um, I have some concerns. What is the distance between the top of the roof and the top of the parapet? Uh, just to be clear, there is no parapet being presented. Uh, so the top of the roof <laughs> and the cornice line is just the same as all of the other homes here uh, with no parapet. There is a 10 foot setback from the top of the roof uh, where the cornice line is back to where the fourth floor begins. Okay, I was talking about the fourth floor, the roof on top of the fourth floor. Uh, I'm sorry, let me go to. Can so, you jump in, Sean? Yeah, please, <laughs> I'm misunderstanding the question. So th this is uh, uh, Lauren Thompson, the project architect. Hi everyone. Uh, the, the height of the proposed fourth floor is, is uh, nine feet to the top of the roof deck of the fourth floor. No, I want we to know the roof, the top of the roof to the top of the parapet. The total height of the building is proposed at 41 foot six. And where is the parapet in relation to that? Which parapet are you referring to? I'm talking to the parapet on the fourth floor addition, uh, the, the part that's on the fourth floor that you have set back? We don't have a parapet wall. We just, we have a, a, a basically an 18 inch curve to prevent, to um, maintain water on the roof. So we have a, a nine foot uh, floor to floor on the fourth floor, which brings us to 40 feet. And then we're at 18 inches to control water. Okay, um, where, where, will, foot six total. where will the roof deck go? How are you the building roof. the roof deck? We're building the roof deck directly on top of the fourth story. So it will not be any higher than 41 feet, six inches. There will be a guardrail above that. Okay, but the actual surface of the roof deck will be at 41 feet, six inches. The surface of the roof deck will be at, at 40 feet. There will be a small curve on the outside to control water and also the roof deck itself will be sloped. All right, the other question I have is, could you explain to me how the steps are going to 
go up from the fourth floor to the roof deck because I've never seen that. And sure. that's we did this in an effort to to minimize the profile of the steps and the roof access. So what we did was we maintained them as exterior to the building and they're immediately adjacent. Uh, Sean, if you don't mind going to the plans, you can they might show it better. Uh, the actual site plan. The yeah, either that's perfect. So they go up immediately adjacent to the volume of the building. And are they? What I'm concerned about is the west side. What is um, preventing anybody from falling over onto my property? I believe currently we have a guardrail on the west side of the of the stair. What kind of a guardrail? What kind of a guardrail? Uh, I believe that's a solid guardrail at the time, but I'm sure it could be envisioned as something that's transparent if that's a concern. Well, the concern I have is that I have skylight on my pilot house. And if somebody's walking up, I don't want somebody to throw, throw anything or to something to drop onto my skylight. Then a solid, a solid would be probably preferable. All right. Um, the next concern I have is the parking area. And um, I see here that it's, it's a revised, um, but you do not reflect what you had talked about at the CCRA meeting last time that was unopposed or not opposed by CCRA. And that is that the, <clears throat> the parking, the, the proposed off-street accessory parking for 512, for 516 South 21st Street was actually going to be a foot into the property on 518 South 21st Street. That doesn't look like that is there. And also that the parking for, five, six, for 518 South 21st Street was also taking, uh, going three feet into the property of 516 South 21st Street. Are you going okay. to? If I, I'm sorry to interrupt, if I may, if I can just address your question, <laughs> Ms. Gismondi, and apologies if I've mispronounced your name. Uh, we are not discussing those properties from last time. The only property we're discussing is 2401 now, Dane. Okay. So the park, from those pre, from those the parking and the the question your questions related to those previous properties that's not what we're discussing tonight. There's only the one property on the table. So thank you for those questions, but we're not discussing them. Okay, um, we do have a concern, and that is to be able to Rodman Street is a very small street, and to be able to make the the turn into or to um, get into that parking spot for three cars is going to be almost impossible. We have a hard time getting into it with a 10 foot um, garage opening, garage door opening. So that is our concern. Uh, so if I could jump in here, I know it's not really the subject of tonight, but just to make clear for anyone who wasn't here, um, th there is an existing curb cut back here. We are extending the curb cut and there will be three park off street parking spaces. Uh, two previously um, already discussed for 516 South 21st and 518 South 21st. Uh, they've already been approved by the streets department as uh, acceptable and turn in and it is only going to be one curb cut. So we're getting rid of a curb cut on 21st. We're getting rid of the curb cut on Nadane and uh, just having the one sort of extra wide curb cut at the rear. And being that it's extra wide, it will actually uh, easily afford access to each of the three vehicles um, because there will not really be separation between the three parking spaces. Hey, you. Could, you, could you tell me who's going to own the proposed off-street parking as it's stated here for 516? Uh, so the... Uh, the land will not be owned by anyone other than what you see now. There will be a parking easement uh, placed across each of the three properties for each of the for one space for each of the three properties to have uh, full access to one of the three spaces. Well, my concern is that when um, they start saying that uh, OPA 
starts to look at that property, 2104, and compare it with my property, and then start with taxes, um, I want to know if the proposed off street parking for 516, is that going to be part of the property for 2104, making it 960 square feet, or is it going to be less than the 960 square feet? The square footage of the properties will not change. They are going to stay exactly as they are now and remain unchanged throughout this whole process. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for all these questions. Have we covered all of your concerns, Ms. Gismondi? I'd like to be sure that there's time for everyone who has questions. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else who would like to uh, speak uh, regarding this property? 2104 now, Dane. Please raise your hand uh, using the virtual raise hand feature. So is there anyone here who does not or cannot operate the raise hand feature and would like to unmute themselves and speak about this property? Okay, I seeing no one, I want to thank you all for a very efficient meeting on 2104. I'd like to thank the presenters, uh, Sean Whalen and uh, the remainder of the group. Uh, thank you for being very clear. Uh, seeing no other questions, we're going to now move on to the second property on our agenda. Those of you who are here for 2104 now, Dane, thank you for attending. You can now exit unless you'd like to uh, listen to one of the remaining four properties we have. Thank you for your presentations and now we'll move forward. We're now moving forward to 251 South 21st Street. And I'm going to read uh, the, what the application and the reason for refusal is. The application is for retail sales of food, beverages and grocery at first floor in the same building with all other uses as previously approved. No sign on this application. And the reason for refusal is the proposed retail sale of food, beverages, and groceries is prohibited in this zoning district. So 251 South 21st Street. And I, uh, there's a, yes, uh, can good, I evening. Ask, good evening. Uh, let me turn it over to you and we'll, we'd be happy to watch your presentation. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Sen Jin. I'm an attorney. I'm here on behalf of Leslie and Ronald, uh, the uh, proprietors of the business that is being proposed at this location. I'm going to go ahead and share with the uh, board and uh, attendees the information relating to this case. Can everyone see what I have uh, shared on the screen? Yes, we can see, and I can confirm for you, Mr. Jin, that we've received all of the necessary documentation regarding your, your project, and we're looking forward to seeing your presentation. Thank you. Uh, so to be clear as to the proposal that is being made at this location, this is only relating to the first floor and basement of the location. The proposal reads as a retail sale of food, beverages, and groceries. The actual proposed use uh, for the sugary is a basically a custom cake shop. Um, what my clients specialize in is the preparation uh, and baking of uh, primarily wedding cakes, uh, cupcakes, and cookies. That is really the scope of the food, beverages, and groceries we're discussing in this application. Because the property is zoned RM1, despite the fact that since at least 1950s, it's had some kind of commercial use on the first floor, the licensing inspections must refuse it as a proposed use. Because the space was both advertised as commercial and was used in some way as commercial, my client had no idea going in that this would uh, be forthcoming. Um, they were prepared to move forward. However, as soon as they found out, we made this application. So in basically structuring this space, what the proposal would be is to essentially have what is a small bake shop um, Majority of the business is expected to be from online as well as walk-in uh, from customers basically ordering and then picking up their cakes. There is the proposal to have a small sitting space in case someone uh, wants to come in and just have a cupcake or 
to simply sit down and have a slice of cake that so they can taste it before they order one for whatever event that they're looking forward to. So we are proposing a very small sit down space, maybe four seats at most. The idea here is to give customers an opportunity to sort of sit and test and taste. Uh, but at the same time, the primary business will be uh, takeout and it would be by appointment mostly and also by online ordering. The first floor, as you can see, has a small area dedicated to walk in, to pick up, and the rest is really uh, set to the bakery um, for baking the cakes and preparing them. The basement also will be set up uh, for part of the preparation, uh, as well as per discussion with my client and also um, feedback from neighbors regarding some substantial concern about uh, pests and trash, we're proposing to make sure that trash will be stored inside the space and only brought out by commercial pickup at the time um, and as many times as needed in the week to make sure that trash is not being really stored in any kind of quantity in the space. We do want to point out that this is not a restaurant, nor is this a full service food type business. The type of uh, waste products we would be looking at would be trimmings from cakes, uh, and really it just left leftover uh, pieces from a cake preparation. And my client in every way possible will try to minimize having that end up in the trash uh, portion of the storage. Uh, we are getting a disposal unit as well to grind down anything that can be grind down to avoid, again, having food trash. Uh, obviously a pest control contract will be in place and we will do everything we can to minimize uh, any kind of pests. Obviously, again, for health department reasons, my clients certainly would not want to have any kind of pest issues anywhere near the entire building. Um, so that is one of the main concerns we've heard about. From a design standpoint, there is um, or there are convection ovens, but they're electric ovens. They're not really, uh, we're not grilling, we're not frying. It is just bakery ovens that will be vented. It's mostly uh, the baking heat from the oven would have to be vented out. Uh, our proposal now based on what is required and because there are multiple residential units above is to have it uh, put up and then about 10 foot above uh, the, the, the oven space and out a louvered vent uh, away from the residents were possible. I, I do have our consultant here with regarding to that particular issue, if there are questions or concerns as to that design, uh, my clients are flexible to work with the best way to exhaust it in a way to have the minimal impact on the community. Uh, again, from operating hour standpoint, we're talking about 8 a.m. to about 6 p.m. We do not expect a ton of traffic being generated by this business, again, most of it will be done online. Uh, people would pick up their cakes and we're hoping, and my client certainly hopes that they will become a staple of the local community and that people would come on foot to walk to their shop, order cakes for uh, their weddings and other events. Birthdays, weddings, those are the type of focus uh, that they have on their business plan. With regard to the um, hardship here with the, with the space, again, it is currently structured as a commercial space. It was actually advertised as a commercial space as well. Um, so based on its existing condition and also its prior use, it'll be hard to simply say that this will be easy to convert right back to a residential use. Uh, there are multiple units already above that is previously approved. Those are not gonna be changed. There are no exterior changes to this property, but my client plans to install both security cameras and lighting where necessary to make sure that the corner will be kept safe and both for the shop and also for the neighbors. And that is essentially our proposal. I'm sure there'll be questions from both the committee and the neighbors. I'll be happy to try to answer them. And again, Mr. Vitti, the uh, consultant on the matters here as well to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Jim. That was very clear and very focused. Uh, let me go through the committee. Uh, Jacob Cooper, do you have any questions? No questions, thank you. Steve Rubin, any questions? No questions, please. Bob Lane. Uh, I, actually, I do. Uh, if people are coming, pulling up their cars to pick up, 
Are you planning on buying a loading zone or is, where, where will people pull up their cars to run in and get their cakes when they're paying? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're uh, proposing to either um, set up a loading zone or have, I, I believe there's a loading zone near the space, but my client actually is looking into uh, getting a loading zone in front of the shop itself to try to minimize any issues with pickup. Well, looking into it, would you um, agree to uh, committing to, uh, the way it works with the city is you have to like buy a loading zone. Would you commit to as a condition to uh, getting that? Um, I, I think Leslie and Ron both are here. I think um, that is something that they, they uh, can answer. Leslie, would, would that be something that you would have a problem committing to, uh, obtaining a loading zone for your business? If, if you can unmute yourself, I don't know if that's possible at the moment. No, that's no problem at all. Great. We can commit to that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Bob. Any other questions? Seeing none. Um, Janice Woodcock. Any questions? I'd like to ask uh, some questions about what I know some of the neighbors are concerned about and that what was the pest problem that the building previously had. Um, do you, is there a plan in place to alleviate that problem from the site? Uh, thank you. I, yes, thank you. Um, as I presented earlier, my clients uh, are well aware of the concerns with pests. Um, as as a food business, they're also very concerned with the idea that there will be pests in the building or surrounding the building. We're definitely going to have pest control uh, coming out on a regular basis. They're going to make sure the trash containers are stored inside and controlled. Um, and the landlord, uh, I see a message just pop up that he will be here to speak on this as well. We're going to work with the landlord, the neighbors, and also the requirements of any health department, make sure that pests are controlled in this space, particularly um, making sure our operation, my client's operation would not be the source of additional pest problems for the neighbors. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Evan Litvin? No questions. Okay. Ben Weinrod? <clears throat> Yeah, just a quick question. Is there a, a scrubber plan for that exhaust on the side? And has that exhaust uh, penetrating through a facade in the historic district been run through historic committee? Um, I don't know if Mr. Vitti can address that. Uh, Fred, would you be able to address that quickly? Uh, you're still muted at the moment. Yes, hi. Um, it would be the electric convection ovens will require either a type two hood. Uh, there is no grease, no smoke. So a scrubber system would not be um, something that would be uh, needed for a type two hood. Um, as far as the, the heat goes, that could be addressed in similar ways, some different ways. One is what I, Propose first, if we can meet the requirements, um, we'll put an inline fan not to show, of course, in the historic district, no ductwork going up to the roof. So it'll be an inline fan uh, with a louver that would be cut into the wall if we meet the requirements. That would be our first choice. Um, the engineer, uh, Mark Wachter, also has. Um, He's looking to possibly, um, instead of uh, doing that, he wants to control the heat by be really beefing up the HVAC and bringing back the makeup air, uh, which is allowed by code. Uh, however, these stuff, this couple of things have to be worked out because we would need a 10 foot um, height requirement, even for a louver. And we would have to be three foot from any openings and so forth, as you know. So the, uh, the, if, if the engineer was able to work it out with the HVAC upgrade, that would alleviate the need for the louvers at all? 
I believe so. The heat applying, yeah, because it, it, it's uh, 0.70 CFM. Um, so he would be able to alleviate the heat by, again, with the HVAC, you know, uh, upgrading the HVAC system design, uh, you know, with that into a design and a separate removal system. And again, that would be something that we would definitely have to work out if this is moving forward. So regardless, both historical and eventing and also the heat management would all have to be approved by the city per each step as you move forward. So to answer your question, Mr. Weintraub, um, uh, the, I'm sorry, Weintraub, uh, the proposal would be to, if possible, we'll do venting if historical commission permits the space, the location. If not, we would engineer something that potentially would cycle the heat through the HVAC to cool it and therefore uh, eliminating the need to venting it out to the, um, to the outside to some kind of opening. Thank you. Any further questions, Ben? Seeing none. Uh, Charles Robin. Oh, Ben, I see you've unmuted yourself. Any further questions? No. No. Thank you. Charles Robin? Yes, I have a few questions, please. I'm still unclear with regard to vetting, but I just want to be clear on something off the get go is that obviously you, you Council, you understand that all variances run up the land. So by converting this to a bake shop, does that convert it to a takeout restaurant? Uh, no, th this one is not, it's not a takeout restaurant application. And this, even if it's approved, I guess it would be closer to a grocery uh, approval rather than a takeout restaurant approval. So it's, it's, it's a bakery which involves food, groceries, and beverages, but it's not approval for a pure takeout restaurant. Well, I, I, I have to take your word on that, counselor, but it sounds to me less of a grocery and more of a, uh, uh, you're doing baking. So it's not a, it's not a sit-in restaurant, obviously, because of the space, right. but we do have requirements for takeouts. You know, somebody's going to be coming in, or you're going to be selling cupcakes, so it's going to be, you know, something of that nature also, correct? Right. Yeah, uh, and and I, my understanding, based on uh, prior uh, conversations with the, with the organizations, that if we had any kind of takeout containers, their names would have to be on it. Uh, there are certain requirements that you guys would have for takeout restaurants, in addition to some a business like this. And I think most of those we we would not have an issue with meeting if no. required. You you know, I'm sure Wade Albert, our attorney, can walk you through those uh, issues if this, you know, falls within that, under that umbrella. And uh, to me, it seems of that nature, um, you know, and the internal yeah. trash storage is fine, obviously. But I still don't understand about the, uh, the venting for the kitchen. You, will you have to penetrate the south wall? I don't understand. Um, so what, what Mr. Vitti was explaining is that the easiest way would be if we can, in fact, uh, penetrate the wall with a louver uh, that lets the heat out. If that is not allowed due to historical commission requirements, mm -hmm. then the engineer would have to utilize a cooling process with an upgrade HVAC unit. Yeah, Councilor, I heard all that. I understand okay. that. My yeah. one question to you, if you had to penetrate the wall, you're mm -hmm. dealing with Latimer Street? Um, Fred, have you um, looked at the which street that is most likely to be the direction that the venting would go in? Um, the side street is Latimer, correct? Yes. yes. It will be on the side street. If you look at the plan, what right. I showed just for like health department and to put something together quick was an inline exhaust fan, um, take the heat to a louver providing again that we have the 10 foot above the adjoining grade and we're three foot away property line and three foot from any operable openings into the building. Uh, now I'm not sure if, again, that that's, it meets them requirements at this time. I, the only one question I would have, because I'm not an engineer and I don't pretend to be, is that if you came out of Latimer Street, would you have to go above the roof line? can't just have not, a bent off in Latimer Street. 
Well, you would have to go to the roof right. uh, with ductwork right. and 10 foot on the roof is the code. However, again, now this is not um, a type one hood, it's a type two hood and it's an electric convection oven. It's not a gas appliance. Now right. I'm not, but I, I, I understand that was the second thing, depending on, it's not a historical building, but it's in a historical district. So it would have to get a historic approval also. Yes, and, and with regard to concerns, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think that the, I would like to see if it, again with the engineer, if it could be handled within the building and just um, uh, vented either on 21st or on Latimer, you know, as far as if we, if he would meet them requirements. And then Obviously the well, I, I didn't want to, sorry, I did not want to interrupt you, but obviously you don't want to bet on to 21st Street. Yeah, right. So, I mean, Latimer right. Street, you do have residents there. Right. So. If you look at my, if you look at the floor plan, you can see the dotted line and it shows the event going to Latimer. All right. Um, yeah, I see, I see the, this is the. Now, and then it, there's also another louver that would be for intake for makeup air coming back in. Now, one of the, one of the convection ovens is like a little tabletop unit, says electric catco oven. The other one is a full size uh, electric convection oven. I'm, I'm not gonna, I took up enough time, but my, I'll just express my one concern so that you're aware of it is that all these run with the land and the, if a, that small okay. space does need venting and it comes down on Latimer Street, it may affect the neighbors on Latimer Street. So maybe there's come some provisos we can incorporate. I, 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 think, I think a proviso limiting uh, use to bakery goods and that'll eliminate restaurants from easily coming in and taking the space without a further variance uh, would help you eliminate some of that concern. I'm certainly happy to work with CCRA's attorney to come up with language that would restrict the use to the proposal we have, which is just baking cakes, uh, cupcakes and stuff. We're not going to, yep. so no frying, no, and there could be limitations that would eliminate a restaurant use. Yeah. And I think, let me just interrupt one minute. I think that the model of their business is more of a cake boutique is what they actually do now. They actually, uh, when I say cake boutique, people are planning a wedding. They actually would come there. They would do a tasting. They would do flavors and see what they like and then pick a design. And then they would order their cake, which would then be delivered to the event. Okay. I think that the, there's no fryers, there's no, you know, donuts and stuff like, and maybe I shouldn't say a typical bakery, but I think we have to go back to see again, what their model is now and how many years they've been in business doing that. So this is just like a glorified space to host these different people coming in to select the cake. And I think the majority of their business and the majority of their, their business model, they make their money there. I think that the, you know, selling slices to the neighborhood of some kind of pound cake and- uh, Yeah, Fred, we, we have a business plan actually submitted with exhibits. Okay, uh, I don't want to have, um, we can have Leslie speak on that if, the, if we have time, but- Right. Let's try to stay focused on the uh, questions. Okay. Thank no you. further questions. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you, you for that. Um, moving down our list, uh, Ben Zuckerman, do you have any questions? I do not. Uh, Robin Sweet. Uh, no questions. Flora Becker. Flora, you will need to unmute yourself. No questions. Uh, Jacob Cooper, I think I already asked you. Was that correct? Correct. No questions. Thanks. Bob Lane. You already asked me, and I discussed the uh, drop off. Uh, you did, correct. Uh, so, yeah. And Steve Rubin. Okay, hearing no, no, questions. no questions. Thank you. Thank you. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to open this up to uh, the uh, members of the public. 
Is there anyone who would like to comment on this property and, it, and uh, what is under discussion here? And again, this is for 251 South 21st Street. Uh, I'm going to call on your names as I see your hands raised. Uh, Reed Axelrod. Um, I'm here with my wife, Ann Wren. Um, we're uh, homeowners and residents of uh, 2054 Lat uh, Locust Street, which fronts Latimer Street. We essentially live 20 feet from this property that is being discussed right now. Um, we, uh, we have southerly exposure looking onto Latimer Street. Uh, there have been no photographs really showing Latimer Street, but for those that don't know, it's a, a very small scale, charming block with a six foot eight road bed and the sidewalks are less than the usual sidewalks in Philadelphia. Thank you. And so your point is that the sidewalks are less than our standard in Philadelphia. This is your point or your, and you have a question? Well, I do. Okay. So I have a, a if it's all right, I have more statements than questions, but uh -huh. we we very much oppose this uh, this proposal. We think it's a wonderful concept, and we we appreciate how beautifully made the product is from these proprietors uh, proposed. But it's a great concept, but for the wrong location. Um, one thing that was brought up before there there is no loading zone in front of the building. Um, Latimer is a dead end street and traffic homeowners that have garages and both the church uh, staff and, and uh, people who are at the other end, you know, have a fairly challenging way to uh, navigate and to get out onto 21st Street in a safe manner. So the street is very challenging to drive. Um, and, and absolutely, there is no loading zone. Um, from a resident standpoint, we're concerned about um, in the way that this should this business be allowed. Uh, what's deceptive about that plan that was shown, it shows only about the 40 foot depth of the tennis space for the store or bakery that's being proposed. The building really occupies 80 feet on Latimer Street. And um, it has that cellar door in the sidewalk that's being proposed to bring trash up and out of. There has never been routine commercial trash pickup um, on Latimer Street for any purpose, any function whatsoever. And deliveries for product for the proprietors to bake their goods uh, being brought through there to the refrigerator shown in the basement, not a good idea. Uh, they will block the street. They'll make it unsafe. Um, okay. as, far as, as far as the ducts are concerned, uh, the building's been under interior renovation since last November. There hasn't been a permit shown in the window for any of the work. Uh, they've already installed air conditioning, a new a complete air conditioning for the building. There's no interior duct work in the building. Um, we really would oppose greatly having both intake and exhaust of freshly baked goods being thrown onto Latimer Street and as we know, um, pests do like the smell and are attracted by the smell of foodstuffs being baked, especially sweet ones. Again, okay. we've lived in this neighborhood for, I won't say, but we've been proprietors, we've been customers of the former laundries that have been there. We've never lived more than one block away from this building for the last 40 years. Uh, we know tenants who have said they were leaving because of rat problems. Um, we know that you can hire a pest company. There are already pre-existing conditions there that this sort of use, again, we would love to see cakes just more in a commercial district. Um, okay. On a wider street. On a, okay. on a wider street. Thank you very um, much. You've been very clear. Do you have additional points that you want to make? Or, and I can we hear clearly that you are opposed. If you don't, if you don't mind. Um, Please. The, the, the entire block is zoned RM, the entire block, other than St. Patrick's Church. The surrounding properties that, uh, that 
that are but this block between 20th and 21st uh, are all RM1s, with the exception of just a few. Mm -hmm. In zoning law, we don't see where there's any kind of hardship that exists here to grant a variance or, what, or to justify a variance. And if supported or granted, this variance would become detriment. It would make it would be detrimental to the neighborhood and the quality of the environment and the safety of the street. Um, okay. The the just the last one that we're really because trash I, I could go on and I won't mm -hmm. but trash is a huge concern and the solution of keeping the trash in the basement and having it removed through that cellar door on the sidewalk um, involves a lot more detail for anyone who knows that and lives in the city near a restaurant. Uh, there's an inability to enforce the owners or the tenants cleaning the street. Uh, the only restaurants that exist that have that situation in our neighborhood are owner occupied. We, 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 we know the family who has the restaurant at 20, 20th and, and Rittenhouse Street. We know Friday, Saturday, Sunday owners who live in the building. So there's a respect for the street, and we can't be assured that anything will be monitored here to keep the street in a proper way. Um, I, I thank you for all of the time you've given me. I could keep going, but I won't. Thank you, Mr. Axelrod. You've been very clear in your specific points of opposition. I want to now jump to call on a committee member who's raised his hand, Ben Zuckerman, and then I'll go in the order of other hands that I've seen raised. Ben, yeah. can you unmute okay. yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, I am unmuted, I think. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I've gone by and looked at the property. And my question is, where will the trash be picked up from and where will deliveries uh, go to? I mean, it, there's either okay. a front door right on 21st Street or a side door pretty far back down Latimer, I think. So can you please clarify that? Yes. <clears throat> um, and that's something that uh, um, Leslie and uh, Ronald has thought about as well. With, with regard to the actual deliveries, um, there, this is not a, again, I, I understand there's a focus on this becoming a restaurant um, and the amount of deliveries and things that will be involved with that versus what they're doing, which is a uh, boutique cake uh, bakery. The deliveries generally would be coming directly from the front of the, uh, the business into, because th they have a very small area for seating and it'll go right into the kitchen area, essentially. The trash is the only one that they would have to work with the commercial company to go to the side, um, the Belco doors, and they would be responsible for bringing it up, meet the trash company, make sure the company then is able to take it in their truck and move it away. I don't expect any kind of delivery trucks of substantial size needed for this business operation. And, and Leslie, uh, please feel free to chime in to uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Based on our discussion, you're not going to have 18 wheelers coming to deliver anything to the to the space because it's not needed. Uh, most of the materials they get will be in certain quantities that a, a, a van, in essence, would be able to deliver to the space. So that's uh, that's what we expect would be the. Uh, I'm not yeah. I'm not sure what you said about the trash. Uh, how would that be taken out from the building? So that would be coming up from the basement to the uh, side. Bilco doors that the the ones that are on the street itself they would be opened the trash will be brought out and then it, they are going to be in tow containers wait, with wheels wait, stop yeah stop that door that side door is how far in down Latimer Street from twenty first um, based on the hold on one second I'll go ahead and pull up the plans it's in the picture so it'll be easier to discuss it that way so this is this is the uh, door that is in question um, let me see if we have a Different view that uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have looked at the property, and that's set back pretty far from Twenty First Street. It, it is set back a distance from Twenty First Street. Yes. So the trash would come out through that door to a trash truck. Where the trash truck would have to be on Twenty First Street to pick up the trash. Not they're, they're, they cannot really get a trash truck through Latimer Street. It's a no, small street. Can't access Latimer. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Jim, can you say that that is a cellar door in the sidewalk and not a door on a wall? 
I'm sorry. It's not a door on the wall. Yes, that's it's not correct. a door it's, on the wall. It's a yeah. cellar door in the sidewalk. Yes. So you'll be bringing trash up in the evening, and they'll come pick it up overnight in the morning. No, we're not bringing it because this is going to be using commercial um, pickup. They they make the arrangement. They're paying for the company to show up to pick up when they need to have pickup done. So there'll be an arrangement between the company and my clients. So this is not just, we're not dumping it on the side of the street for the city to come and try to get it. No, no. Yeah. yeah. No. So the, okay. the times so, will be. So, so yeah. thank you so much. So I think what I'm hearing is that there's a cellar door on Latimer Street at some point down Latimer Street and the trash trucks, commercial companies will need to stop on 21st to pick up trash that will be brought up through the cellar door on, on Latimer Street and then somehow transported to the trash truck on 21st Street. Is that correct? That's correct. There'll be a, okay. there'll basically be trash tows with wheels. Um, it's not, again, we're, we're not talking about enough trash to, you, to even um, fill up. We're not talking about having a, uh, you know, a, a trash, uh, large trash container here. This is gonna be essentially a gallon size, uh, you know, 30, 50 gallon size at most trash can with, with wheels that would hold the trash and then it would just be pulled up and taken out. And again, my client plans to have multiple pickups in a week. So she doesn't have to have really any trash stuck inside the space. It's, it, all this will be to minimize problems for her as well, given concerns mm -hmm. with rodents and other pests um, on the block. Okay, well, thank you for this clarification. Ben, do you have other questions? Seeing none, I'd like to go to Amy's iPad. Uh, can you please unmute yourself and state your name and address? I, I know you have Hi. your, mm -hmm. go Amy ahead. Amy Shutterworth, 2046 Latimer Street. My mm -hmm. house is directly next to this, uh, this building. I have a number of concerns, parking being one of them, trash being another, an exhaust coming out of the side of the building mm -hmm. is noisy hot air, all of that. In addition to that, we had a bad rodent problem when they dug up our Belgian block street last year. A lot of it came from this house and I realized that you don't wanna do that and you'll take care of that. I don't trust you. If you look tonight at the side of the building, what they've, they've, they've added air conditioning inside and put all the white piping outside they tried to cover it up by spray painting the bottom third of the, the white, the white PVC pipe. So, but in addition to that, Mr. Vitti described a restaurant, somebody coming in, sitting down to eat or coming in and tasting cakes. That to me is a, is, is a food emporium restaurant. I did not move to my house 11 years ago I looked at two houses. One was next door to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and one was this one. I did not move to this house to be next door to some place that sells food. I okay. hugely oppose this, mm -hmm. as do a number of my neighbors, if not all of them. I'm worried about people walking down my street, dropping things in my planters, stealing things from my street because they're, they, it's a very beautiful, cute street. It's happened before without a food emporium at the end of the block. Thank you, Ms. Shellerith. You have been very clear, very concise, and, and very focused in your comments. Are there any other points that you would like to raise that are the sources of your opposition? No, <laughs> thank you. You have been very clear. Thank you very much. Um, are there, uh, now I would like to call on an individual who uh, dropped a point in the chat, Andy Frankel. I understand that you are the landlords. Did you want to speak in regard to this property? Yes, we do. Please do. Um, and please state your address, if you would. Andrew Frankel, 1803 Pine Street. I'm here with my wife, Toyin Frankel. Um, we've owned that building since 2006. And unfortunately, in the process of this permit, we've heard a number of untrue stories perpetuating the neighborhood, and we'd like to address some of them both in the context of this permit and in the context of unfortunate neighborliness. We're long-term residents of Rittenhouse. We've lived here since 2003. We bought that building in 2006. 
and we've lovingly maintained it in and out since then. We own other properties around the neighborhood. We have bought and fixed ourselves to preserve the historic <clears throat> loveliness of them. Our tenants typically stay for a long time. We inherited the dry cleaner who was there for many years. She closed in 2019 because of an illness. Starting in 2019, we started to upgrade the central systems of the building. Permits were granted to do the electrical system in 2019. Permits were granted in 2021 to replace the plumbing. Permits were granted in 2022 to do the mechanical systems. Since the year of purchase, we've had a pest control contract with Ehrlich. We have never once had a rat call inside the building, never once. However, from neighbors placing trash on the side of the street, not us, there is a rat history outside and my wife will be happy to detail that story. A lot of it has to do with the renovation of Latimer Street, um, but this absolutely will be happy to proffer all the, um, the evidence in the history of our contract with Ehrlich and previous pest control use, there was never once a rat call. The story that tenants have left because of rats is patently false. We have a regular cleaning service. Our current company has been cleaning for two years. Before that, we had a team for almost a decade. They stopped because a family member died of COVID. We have a dedicated handyman. Initially, I was the handyman myself for many years. Our current handyman has worked there for seven years. He's written a letter, uh, which will be offered to the city about the care and maintenance of the building and the fact that we've never had a call for rats. Uh, our tenants are usually with us for a minimum of two years. They're mostly student units. They're all studios except for one one bedroom unit. Um, we have uh, one tenant that's there now that's also submitted uh, a letter in support of the building and how we care for it. Um, this year at the end of some tenants leases because we had upgraded the plumbing, we took the time to redo bathroom and kitchen appliances um, as well as redoing with the historical commission of the city and with their permission, replacing some aged doors and restoring the facade of the building with a nice new paint job. We're very much involved in the building in the neighborhood and this aspersion that we're absentee landlords is uh, disturbing and upsetting, especially given the way the neighborhood has actually used the side of that building as a trash dump. And we have years and years of fines that we've paid for the city for trash from addresses. I'll be happy to share with you and neighbors with you, but I'll let my wife do. Well, thank um, you very much. You've been very clear, Mr. Frankel. I'm sorry, Mrs. Frankel, did you want to, did you, did I interrupt you? I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I just have a few things to add. Um, as my husband said, we bought the building in 2006, and I personally actually managed the building. And here's a few things I'm going to submit to the, uh, to the body if they want. There's a contract with the ELIC that we initiated immediately we bought the building. This contract I'm showing you dates back to 2009. The original contract was before they started having uh, online documentation. This is from 2009. We still have a current contract with ELIC. Oh, I'll, I'll be happy to send that to you. I'll also be happy to uh, contact ELIC if you want to follow up with them. ELIC has never treated rat infestation in that property. They are ready to support that statement. Thank you so much, Mrs. Frankel. Are and there other There's new more, points? I just want to quickly go over that. Please. We Are there have, other new points? Mm -hmm. We have a statement from a, uh, Andy Mann who maintains the building. He's been working with us for seven years. There was another gentleman that worked with us before then that worked with us for 10 years to maintain the building. In regards to saying we are doing work that's not permitted, that's also a lie. If you go to the city record, there are permits for plumbing, there's permit for electric, and there's permit for mechanical. And then uh, the last statement I'm going to make, everybody in that community, they knew that Latima Street itself was completely gutted by the city government. Two years ago. Two years ago. And while that process was going on, it took two years. While that process was going on, the entire neighbors, on Latima Street decided to use the front of our property as their dumping ground for garbage. They knew that. And, and I met with two neighbors, one on 255 24th Street and one on, on Latima Street that we actually, both of us met and decided we're going to call the city. 
and report that neighbors are using the property, our property, as a dumping ground. And the neighbor next to us, 255 24th Street, was the one that was calling uh, the councilman to request treatment. And once the, the that, uh, road was finished, and I paid for people to uh, for the for people to pick up trash to keep the property clean. That wasn't our fault. Up to okay. today, up to today, we drive there every day. We have a camera that records neighbors that will come to our property and drop trash. And every time my husband would drive by, watch the camera, pick up the trash, and return it to, to the property that dropped trash on us. OK, excuse me. I'm so sorry to interrupt, Mrs. Frankel. What you're saying is important, and I want to hear everyone's voice. We do have five properties this week, this evening. It won't be this weekend unless we, uh, that would be what we want to avoid. I want to, what I'm hearing is that there are different views on the trash. Are there, is there anything new that anyone has to say? Any comments that haven't been made yet? Respectfully, we have three other properties and they deserve equal hearing as well. And I, I believe we've heard clearly from the neighbors, their thoughts, and clearly from the landlords, their thoughts. Are there any new points? Can I make one point? Uh, I'm not sure who's speaking. Mr. Vitti. Yes, please do, Mr. Vitti, okay. go ahead. I, I want to be can clear. Be focused that and the... brief, please. If you can right. please be okay. focused and brief, sir. Uh, to, to express some of the concerns about the type two hood, the type two hood is not required on the electric convection oven. Uh, when I first showed on the plan, uh, just, you know, I did a quick floor plan to just show different things that could be done to get rid of heat. Okay, again, it could be. So thank you so much, Mr. V. handled with the heat from the, from the atrium. Yes, thank you for that thought on the hood. Um, I think now we want to focus on zoning issues. Now, does anyone have anything new they want to say? Mr. Axelrod, I see you have your one, hand raised. One small clarification to Dr. Frankel. Um, I, just, uh, I just need the forum here to understand that the person who talked about rats didn't fabricate that. And that I think it was said that, you know, there's no evidence that that's ever happened. We know for sure uh, Mr. Frankel, Mrs. Frankel know that they had a, a young architect living in the apartment right behind this tenant space who told us three times she was leaving because there was a rat problem. The, okay. the tenant who ran the dry cleaner before the last dry cleaner went had rat problems and found them in the basement. That's, um, that's okay, so thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you so much. Right. I want to thank the public. Thank you. I want to thank the public. I'm hearing two different statements on the rat issue. We hear overall that rat pests and trash are very important to, to neighbors as well as to the owners. And so thank you for that. And At I this just time, I, be to, yeah. I believe we, who, I'm sorry, who would like uh, to speak? This is Attorney Jin. I just want to make a quick statement that- And, and sir, if you can be very brief, we, very have, brief. we have other I just want properties to focus, that need to be hearing. Absolutely. I just want to focus that this is not a restaurant. It is a small bake operation. So we want to be And thank you so much, Mr. Jin. Excuse thank me you. for interrupting. That's been underlined. Thank you. I believe we have, thank you. I believe we have heard all of the opinions on all sides and we can see that there are differences. Thank you for all of your opinions and thank you for uh, your presentation and your, and your clarity of thought. We are now, uh, as I don't hear any new points, uh, anything beyond what we have heard, which is focused on trash, parking, pests, rats, and so on, I'm now going to move to our third of five properties. They also, these remaining three properties need to have a fair hearing. So thank you very much to everyone who has attended and discussed the property on 251 South 21st Street. Uh, thank you for your presentations and your comments. Thank you. We're now going to move to 1513 to 17 Pine Street. Um, and I'm going to read the uh, application and the refusal. So the application is for the erection of an attached structure, 46 feet, six inches high, roof decks accessed by a pilot house with balconies. Deck at second floor with five-story accessory parking garages for two cars accessed by a shared driveway for a multifamily household living five dwelling units. 
And the refusal is for uh, the maximum height. Uh, for higher density, density residential allowed is 38, and for districts is proposed, proposed 46.6. So uh, I'd like to turn it now over to the representatives, excuse me, of 1513 to 1517 Pine Street. Uh, Linda, Ms. Ms. Truang, I think you were here previously, and other representatives of 1513 Pine Street. Uh, David Orfanides, I'm the attorney representing the uh, developer, and there's also uh, Gabe Deck from Noam Architecture. Thank and, you, Mr. Uh, Orfanides. I'll, I'll, I'll turn the floor to you. Sure, and then Tom Familetti, who's from uh, Zetas. Um, let me, may I share my screen? <clears throat> Please do. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is David Orfanides. I'm an attorney with Orfanides and Toner here in Philadelphia. Um, here tonight regarding 1513 Pine Street, which is a new construction, a proposed new construction project. Uh, I'm here representing Z1 1513 Pine LLC. Uh, for those of you uh, who may not know the address, it's the parking lot on the northwest corner of Pine Street and South Hicks Street. Uh, the parking lot has been there since at least the 1940s. Uh, here's a Sanborn map. That's the earliest one we could get. Um, that shows that it's been in existence then uh, until the present day. Uh, the property is owned RM1 uh, that allows for multifamily residential as well as single family residential uses. Uh, it is surrounded by other RM1 properties, uh, has some RSA5 single family properties across the street, and then a mix of RMX3 and CMX4 properties nearby. Um, the RSA-5 properties like the RM-1 have a 38-foot height limit, although you're going to see from the photographs that the properties to the west of us on our portion of the 1500 block of Pine Street between South Hicks and uh, South 16th Street and across from us uh, are uh, taller than that um, at four stories in height. Then you have the RMX-3 and CMX-4 properties um, to the north and to the east of us, which uh, don't have a height limit. Uh, per se, um, have a far limit of 500. I uh, hear some aerial images of the existing parking lot, the property 1513 Pine Street. Um, you can see, and you'll see further uh, in some additional photographs, the four-story buildings that extend uh, to the west of us um, from the property next to us and to the west. Um, you've got the, um, the Drake, which is about 33 stories tall to the north end of South Hicks at Spruce. Um, you've got the Terrain, which looks to be about 13 stories. You'll see that. You've got another four-story building at 311 and 317 South Hicks Street, right uh, to the south of the CVS. And then you can see these are all views from the south and then views from the north at the bottom to the south to the west and here you can see them circling. Um, that's obviously the Drake. Existing photographs of the property. Um, again, existing parking lot. I think it's 25 cars or so. I'd have to look at the zoning car archives again. Um, it's not manned by uh, anybody uh, individually there these days. Um, it's automated parking, I guess you would call it, um, self-serve parking. Uh, here's the uh, building, the four-story building directly to the west of us. You can see here the view from Hicks Street, the abutting property to the north of us on Hicks Street. And then other views uh, here again to the north end of the block, you have the, uh, the Drake and the terrain uh, on the right. And then from the left, you have the views from Pine Street uh, just to the west of us, both on our side of the, uh, the sidewalk on the north side of Pine Street here, all the way to the photo to the left which includes the abutting properties to the west of us. And then here from in Pine Street, uh, shooting kind of to the northeast where you capture the Kimmel Center. And the properties on the opposite side of us on Hicks Street. Uh, here's some stitch views put together of, uh, of the block. The top, oops, sorry about that. Top view is our, our portion of uh, Pine Street from Hicks to South 16th. This is where we spoke about, when I spoke about four stories common cornice line, uh, except for this property right here, which has a small mansard, five-story budding above, and then the abutting property uh, ascending above, and then the budding property to the west of us 
which is the same height behind, behind this uh, single facade here that extends up. It doesn't extend all the way back. The south view of uh, our block of Pine Street uh, from 16th to 15th, you see the UARTS building here to the left. Um, I think that's about 10 stories tall. And then the other buildings are all four stories uh, extending all the way uh, to 16th Street. You can see here South Hicks, um, you have a mix of, you have three stories and two stories until you get to the Drake, which is obviously extremely tall. And then an opposite on at here at the bottom, you have the opposite side of Hicks, which is a mix of three and two stories, again, until you get to 311 and 317 South Hicks, uh, which are four stories right below the CVS. Some other views of the block, I'm sure everybody's on the call is, is quite familiar with those. Um, the drawings that we submitted um, to LNI and to the Planning Commission, I'll get back to those in a minute. Uh, my clients uh, purchased the property just uh, recently and um, they closed on it uh, at the end of January, uh, January 31st. And being an RM1 property uh, was considered for a multifamily development project. Um, that a buy rate development project here using utilizing the green roof bonus and the low income housing, uh, mixed income housing bonus uh, would garner a 22 unit multifamily development with no off street parking. And as you'll see, uh, when I go, we can go through this, um, ends up with a structure that's actually slightly taller than uh, what by right than what we're uh, we're proposing right now. And I think you can see this right here. This is the by right with the bonuses, and this is what we're proposing. My clients prefer, uh, think it's more fitting to do instead of doing the 22 units um, to do they want to do five townhomes um, with each one with uh, access coming in off of Pine Street. So they're going to right now. If you go back to the photos, um, there are curb cuts up and down Hicks Street and on Pine Street. Um, the idea <clears throat> is to have one curb cut uh, on Pine Street and five single, four-story single-family homes with roof decks. Each of the units will have two-car accessory parking, a private parking garage. Um, they'll basically, you'll have to look at the floor plans, but it's not completely open underneath here. Oops. Each unit has its own separate garage um, that accesses this, this common drive uh, in and out from Pine Street. But as you can see, here's the outline of the what would be done by right versus um, what we're proposing. We do have shadow studies um, that show the difference between the two. Um, in summary, those, and I know we're short for time, show that the by right project actually shadows more to, uh, than, the, than the, what we're proposing presently. With, with the variance without utilizing the bonuses. We, um, we do have a height refusal, as was mentioned, to go to 46.6. Um, again, we, we went, not again, but we took this matter to the Planning Commission. Um, the property is in the district, but not contributing. So it was review and comment only. Um, in the end, um, what was kind of the general decision or the general consensus was having a roof height or a parapet height that maintain the same pattern um, as the rest of the block to the west of us on Pine Street, save for the building right next to us. But to maintain that extending over um, was preferable to a by right um, project, even though this would send us to the zoning board, to the community. We're going through this because the idea is that what we're, the thought is and the hope is that everybody agrees that this is a preferable project to a buy rate project. We, there were some changes. We met, to what we met with the Architectural Review Committee. We then went to the full commission. There were changes that were made to the type of garage door, the opening of the garage door. Um, we modified floor to ceiling heights and window elevations to try to line them up a little better with the buildings to the west of us. There, you'll see here, um, there was an attempt to, to maintain a little better as much as we can. Could the, some of the architectural embellishments or banding that extend between the first and second floor from what was originally proposed. Oops. And again, the idea is to main, try to maintain this existing cornice line 
that extends similar to what you see on the south side of Pine Street where it's all continuous. Again, you can see the taller buildings uh, up on Spruce Street, do have the smaller buildings to the north of us and across the street, but uh, the Historical Commission kind of viewed this as an extension of the buildings uh, to the west of us. And meaning again, the idea was to maintain that cornice line and maintain the pattern of the rest of the block. You'll have the primary entrances for each of the five single family dwellings on South Hick Street, as you can see here, recessed entryways uh, with a very low uh, step leading up to the ground floor, um, not high steps leading up out of the ground. So you have some air and light, or air and light. you have um, eyes, eyes on the street down here at this level at the front and then along here on Pine Street. A lot of glass, uh, oops, keeps extending. Um, recessed balconies at the fourth floor front, um, you can see here. And then if we go back to the <clears throat> zoning drawings, there are decks at the back of the second floor um, that butt up to the, that butt up to this sidewall right here of the building. Uh, adjacent to us at 1519 Pine Street. As I mentioned, we, uh, we have shadow studies and I'm happy to forward this uh, present these presentation materials to everybody. Um, but I can have Gabe Deck from Gnome Architecture, who's the architect here, go through this. Uh, but essentially, um, there's very little difference between what we're proposing and what the buy right uh, with the bonus, uh, permitted bonuses are. Uh, and in fact, it shadows a little bit less. I understand that there's probably some concern for those who are on uh, here from the from Hick Street regarding the shadowing. Um, but again, what we're proposing is in, in every respect is better than the buy right option and what my clients prefer to put here, something that that kind of fits that better fits in. Uh, letter hey. from the Fifth Philadelphia Historical Commission is right here that shows us going through that process with them. Uh, and our 14303 notice real quickly for um, today's meeting that we um, that shows that went out to the list of addresses. Uh, well, I can think, and I can, con thank you, Mr. Orfanides. I can confirm that you submitted all the necessary materials, including the letters to near neighbors and the certified mailing. So thank you for that. So this, I think, has been a very clear and very focused presentation. It's certainly been very clear and you've shown clearly uh, what you're proposing as well as the buy right. So thank you. Um, I have the impression you've covered all of your main comments um, and main points. Um, if that's, that's good, correct, that's good <laughs> wonderful. So I would now like to turn to the committee. Um, members of the committee, the zoning committee, uh, does anyone have any questions for uh, this property? No. Um, I'm going to encourage folks uh, to unmute if they have any questions. And I see Ben, Z ben Zuckerman, you have questions. Yeah, a quick one. I'm, I'm just kind of surprised that the uh, the city or the historical commission is okay with that common garage door opening onto Pine Street. Did they you know, make any take any issues with that? Um, I mean, I, I don't know that it was 100% preferred. I mean, it, again, it was review and comment um, that couldn't necessarily restrict us. There are other couple, you know, like next block up has a has a garage door, not that great over at the Northwest corner of 16th and Pine. But I think the idea was that overall, and particularly with the change in the opening and the change in the material of the garage door, that, um, that they generally found it to be, they found it to be acceptable and an improved to what improvement to the streetscape and the sidewalk to the wide curb cut that presently exists there for the parking lot. Okay. okay. I mean, you're not, again, it's not like a parking lot. You're going to have cars coming in all the time. I mean, I'm sure I go by here. I live not far from here instead of South. I, you know, you don't see cars, cars generally come in and park for pretty extended periods of time. They're not coming in and out every hour, every, you know, couple of hours. Yeah, I get it. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Steve Rubin, I see that you've unmuted yourself. Do you have questions? No questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Charles, Robin. Uh, do you uh, have questions? One question, but uh, and one comment. Uh, one comment is I echo what Ben had to say, but my one question to Dave is: We're strictly here simply for the height only. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. 
Other um, than that, it's by right. Yes, even with this design. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Evan Litvin, I see that you're unmuted. Do you have questions? Yeah, not not to um, be too repetitive here. Um, ben mentioned, asked about the historical commission, but where was the planning planning commission's, um, what was their take on the, on where the parking access should be? I mean, since it's permitted as a matter of right, they don't, they don't weigh in um, like that. There is a stamp here from the planning commission, but this stamp, it's doesn't show what their position is on parking. And since well, it's a matter of right, they won't weigh in on that. But it relates because it's on a corner and they designate the primary frontage. So right. Typically the parking did. isn't coming in from the primary frontage. Right, because they have Pine Street as a as the primary street. So and it comes in, but because the reason we're able to come in from Pine Street as the primary frontage is because this is a shared drive. Okay. And okay, thank you. 14803 1C point two or something like that addresses the the ability with an attached or semi-detached structure to access from the front when it's set by a shared drive. Thank you. Do other members of the committee have questions? Okay, I'd now like to open it up to the public. So members of the public, can you please use the raise hand feature if you would like to speak? And first, I see that there is a comment in the chat. I'm going to read the comment and then I'm going to ask the individual to um, unmute themselves. And after that, I'll move to the raised hands I see. Uh, apologies for any mispronunciations. Mike Shade has written, someone please ask where the green roof and affordable units are. It is unfair to compare this proposal to buy right with bonuses. Bonuses are meant to give back to the public. What is being given back? Mr. Shade, can you please uh, unmute? And um, if you have anything to clarify, uh, can you do that please? Yes, <clears throat> I do not have any objection to the design of the or the passing of the project, but the way it's presented seems completely unfair and frankly, David, misleading. Although you said with bonuses every time, I'm not sure everyone understands what that means. And not providing any bonuses, you're not applying for any bonuses with this project. And I think to compare it to a buy right project, truly buy right would, would be the only fair way to present this. Um, I'd be you know thrilled to see you provide a green roof on this building or maybe even one of the five units might be for, uh, affordable, perhaps top off a floor as you step down towards the Drake there and actually meet the criteria would be wonderful. Okay, thank you for that thought. And I just want to remind the public as well as everyone here that what we're talking about, the point of our meeting is to talk about the, applicant, the, the, uh, the, the refusal and the particular application. Okay, let me, so thank you. Let me go to Lauren Doolin. Can you please Hi, my name, is Hi, my mm -hmm. name is Lauren Doolin. I am a resident and property owner of 325 South Hicks Street. And mm -hmm. I guess just my thought on the height is, you know, you're assuming the Pine Street height, but, you know, your doors are on Hicks Street. So, while your garage may be going in on Pine Street, the doors are on Hicks and your building just from the top of it is, you know, nine, 10 feet above the existing or adjacent house on Hicks Street. And by what you were showing, once you had the roof decks and all of that, you're 30 feet above the adjacent house. It seems like you're really trying to assume the higher amount but yet the doors aren't on Pine Street. If you did, you'd have to have a driveway going through Hicks so there would be a break and it wouldn't look so jarring from the different heights on. Okay, so thank you for that, Ms. Doolin. Um, just to clarify, are you opposed to this project or do you have a question regarding the very, the very- I'm not opposed to the project. I like the project, I'm opposed to the height. Okay, thank you. Okay. Am I allowed to ask a question about the alleyway uh, or not? Sure, please, please do. Okay. Um, I was reviewing the plans and I saw that you had like a nine foot alleyway. Are you able to confirm what that use might be for? Is that for trash or what, what would that be otherwise used for? It's open area. Um, that's part of the, it's required, you know, to provide, not open area, but it's a rear yard depth that's required to be provided. Gabe and Tom, do you have any thoughts on 
would that residents area be, be would allowed be, to put be. trash there? I guess that's what I'm trying to clarify. Yeah, technically, this is Tom Femlady, the developer. Um, technically, trash would be hosted in the garage. That's, as David said, rear um, yard requirements. So technically, it's a backyard, and it'll more than likely be deeded to that last end unit as a backyard. So okay, for the most All part, right. it'll just be open air, green, green. But it's not the trash collection. Okay, great. Thank you. And we, and we're fine with the proviso that <laughs> these units aren't going to be outdoor trash storage. So we're but we're fine with the proviso to say all trash to be stored interiorly within the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's it's yep. these are going to be two was, ways to have outdoor. Was trash more my trash. secondary question. Yeah. The height was really the main. Point. Yeah, and and again, you know, on the height, um, you know, they did buy this property to develop it, and the idea is that. You know, we understand we listen, you know, they come to me, they came to me, we, we understand about Hicks. Um, but again, you know, if it wasn't us, it could be somebody else coming in and jamming in a bunch of units. And we to make overall to make this project work and get these really nice single family homes. You know, this is this is kind of like what we're looking at. And again, to talk about the gentleman's comments before, you know, there's by right. Which there's buy right without there's buy right without the bonuses buy right with the bonuses which means you don't come to the zoning board you don't go to the community and then what we're doing which is coming for the height variance so I'm trying to be clear about that if it wasn't clear before thank you for that clarification I see uh, no I see no hand raised uh, do we have any more questions or comments uh, from your neighbors regarding this particular project and again it's 1513 to 1517 Pine Street. Sorry, I have one, a third separate item for the uh -huh. roof deck heights. Mm -hmm. um, are you able to see that from Hick Street, like from from I from like the your eyes? Can you see the roof decks? Because those are thirty feet above the Hick Street homes. So, so just so you understand, so Gabe can talk to this a little more. So, uh, the the roof decks are the roof surfaces, so they're not built up above the roofs. So they are they are concealed below. Let me go to the zoning drawings. So they're concealed three and a half feet below that what you see around the perimeter. So the roof deck surface is here, and then on top of that, it's it's set back five well, more than five feet. It's set back. Okay. So from then the what edge is of the roof, but but Gabe, if you can duck five feet here, actually five feet on all sides, but Gabe, can you speak to that, please? Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much what you described. Um, our proposed roof and roof deck surface are at the same height at 46 foot six, and they would be fully concealed behind a solid parapet, which is up to 50 feet. Uh, it's also worth noting that the pilot houses um, we're proposing to slope them, um, you know, for the side that's closer to the Hick Street side, so you wouldn't see them at all from the streets. And they're so also you centrally. The, you won't see the roof deck or the pilot house structures from the street. So when he, when he talks about sloping them, and even though it's not shown here on the plan, we can revise it, but is that that they'll slope from the higher to the yep. rear, to the west, down to to the east? And we that was a revision that we discussed recently. But... Um, but again, these are all the pilot, you know, the idea is to like really as much as possible to, to really minimize and a lot of design thought went into this design to centrally locate the pilot houses. They're only required to be 10 feet back from the front of the building for any portion that's above 42 inches, which if we slope it would be somewhere into the pilot house. We've set it back close to 15, well, 14 feet. And again, very centrally located. We're not pushing it out to the north side by the Hick Street properties or to pull it more towards the east. The idea was to get them centrally and we also paired them, mirrored them here and then moved them away from all the edges. Okay, thank you for that clear presentation. Mark Schneider, I saw that you had your hand raised and I see that you've dropped your question in the chat and Mr. Schneider, your question is when will this project start? Um, Tom, our zoning board hearings in August in September. So I mean, I'm sorry. So it would be we wouldn't break ground ideally until you know we we knew it happened at ZBA. So um you know in the fall at some time. 
Okay, thank you for that clarification. Are there any other questions relating to this property and specifically for the refusal that we're talking about here, which is the proposed height of the project as shown? Okay, hearing none, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Orfanides and the other individuals for this project for their very extensive uh, detailed uh, documents and clear presentation, thank you. We have two other uh, properties thank to address. Uh, thank you. And we're now going to move to our fourth property tonight. And I do want to thank our presenters and the members of the public for uh, moving along at a focused and uh, efficient, relatively efficient pace. This property is 2121 Delancey Place. And the applicate it is application for the erection of a roof deck to the previously approved carport for two off street parking spaces, accessory to existing single family household living size and location as shown on plans. And the reason for refusal is roof deck, whereas the proposed roof deck is prohibited on accessory structure and roof deck, deck setback. Roof decks must be set back at least five feet from the extreme front of the building line closest to the front lot line, whereas the proposed roof deck has no setback from the front building line. So I invite individuals who represent 2121 Delancey Place to share their plans. Mr. Careless, please. Uh, good evening, um, and thank you for the opportunity to present our application tonight. Uh, I'm joined uh, tonight uh, by the property owner, Mr. William Bollinger, along with Sean Narkum, uh, our design professional from Peter Zimmerman, Peter Zimmerman Architects. Um, what I'm displaying, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can see okay. your screen just, just fine. Just to orient the committee to the, to the property, we're here on um, 2121 Delancey Place. 2121 uh, spans from Delancey Place all the way back to the rear of Cypress Street. Um, the focus of the discussion tonight will be on the rear portion of the property where we are proposing a roof deck above a newly approved carport. Um, the bounding streets uh, are South 22nd Street and not pictured here, South 21st Street. Um, this is the view of the rear of 2121 Delancey that I just discussed. This is an image of the formerly, uh, the former car, uh, garage that was at the property. I'm also showing uh, 2126 Cypress Street here to the right on the screen. Um, 2126 Cypress is owned by Mr. Bollinger's son, Douglas. Uh, we are proposing to construct the roof deck above the carport here um, for the use of 2126 Cypress Street pursuant to an easement agreement um, that will also allow 2126 to utilize one space in the carport. Um, this is a, a view looking east on Cypress Street. Um, our property is right here along with 2126. This is a view looking west on Cypress Street. Um, here we are over here. Um, let me minimize this a, a bit. This is an elevation um, as if you're standing in front of the, the, the carport here looking at the deck with 2126 right here. And then we're also showing another drawing here um, as if you're looking um, westbound on, on Cypress Street with the uh, proposed roof deck and carport right here. Um, as, as, um, as was mentioned, our, our relief is, is twofold. We need uh, relief from the board for uh, the, the proposed roof deck and also for the setback. Um, we have the carport that is right up to the, uh, which well, actually seven inches set back from the building line. Um, uh, excuse me, let me just, um, these are views of properties um, that run to the back of Cypress Street that are also on Cypress. Um, this is 2103 Delancey that you can see that there's a roof deck here. We also show a roof deck at 2101 Delancey and then 316 South 21st Street, which is the corner property along 21st Street here. Um, and then this is just another view here. Um, so we show this just to, um, and we will present this to the board just to show that this uh, proposed roof deck is not out of the character of the surrounding area, uh, which is one of the prongs for the variance that will demonstrate at the hearing. Um, and lastly, in addition to the uh, public meeting notice that we submitted to the community, um, Mr. Narkom did um, letter a number of the surrounding properties with a further correspondence inviting a discussion which we had certain individuals uh, participate in. Um, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Narkom just to briefly add some color to 
uh, the proposed roof deck if that's uh, okay with the board, the committee. Uh -huh, please do, uh, if we can have a focused discussion. Of course, uh, Mr. Narkom, if you could take yourself off mute and just be brief with your comments, please. I think you're still on mute, sir. We're still not hearing you, sir. Nothing like technology and a <laughs> Here we go. There you go. Oh, I'm still not hearing you, sir. Your image is appearing as green, and so it looks like you're trying to speak, but it seems like your speakers aren't connected or uh, are not feeding into our meeting. Well, uh, while Mr. Narkom works out his his technology, I believe some of the comments that Mr. Narkom was going to touch on is that we are, we are proposing to add some greenery to the top here uh, for the the uh, properties that are adjacent to the property. So you're not just looking at the deck, you'd be looking at some nice, well-kept green area. Um, Mr. Narkom was also going to comment on the fact that Mr. Bollinger has made a commitment to this, this uh, to Cypress Street, the rear here, proposing new you know street lights and things like that. So there is a commitment to enhancing um, what was, uh, we, we feel, a very cold looking uh, uh, garage here with something that would be more aesthetically pleasing in terms of for the neighbors to look at here. Um, this is obviously for the use of a private residence here. This is not, you know, an Airbnb or anything of the such. Um, so uh, Mr. Mr. Narkin was going to comment on aesthetics, but, but in the interest of time, um, unless he is able to uh, get his technology to cooperate, we can uh, move on to the committee's comments or questions. Okay, well, that sounds very good. And we can always use the chat if there are specific questions for Mr. Narcom. Members of the committee, do you have any questions for this property, 2121 Delancey Place? Can I invite you to unmute yourself and ask your questions? Um, yeah, Steve Rubin. Um, I, when you, um, uh, Mr. Careless, when you say that the carport has been approved and you just need, you're seeking now um, a variance for the deck on top of it, could you describe what the carport itself consists of that's been approved? Sure. Um, this is probably, Mr. Rubin, this is probably the best image I have down here of, of, of the carport, which you're looking at is the property line here. This is the rear of the existing 2121 Delancey place. So there's two spaces in the carport here. Um, I apologize, I don't have a better uh, image of the carport since that's already approved. Um, we'd be happy to supply that to the committee if you wanted to see further renderings of it. So in other words, it's really just a driveway with a garage door is what you're... I don't know. Sean, do you have, if I stop sharing, can you hear me? Would you have an image that you put up of the carport? Um, oh, there you are. We can hear I'm you now. here for the, for the carport. Can you guys hear me now? I'm so sorry yes, about that. Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. Um, Bob, if we, if we go back to the zoning sheet, the, is, that, is that what you're referring to, that image? There, the, the elevation at Cypress Street there, is that... Is that I think the question from the committee member, am I, if I'm getting this right, is, is if you could just describe the carport. Am I understanding your question correctly? Yeah, that's exactly it. So let's start at the base level. The carport's been approved, and we're looking at adding a roof deck to it. So what's the car, what would the carport consist of? So currently, there's a garage door and the driveway behind it. Uh, so are you talking about actually approving, you, you've received approval for what already exists, or is there some additional change? We received, we received the, carport? I'm sorry, Mr. Rubin, to jump in on you. We, we received a, a permit for the, for the construction of the carport. And what does the carport look like? What does that consist of? Sean, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I'm sorry, Steve. I'm sorry for not understanding your question. So the, the, the carport itself really is just going to be a roof over the, the two car parking space. Um, it's gonna have an open wall at the back of the garage. So these overhead doors that you see at the bottom of the screen, those are automatic openers. So those will roll up and you'll be able to see clear through to the rear of the property there. So there'll be two parking spaces there 
with a roof above. And the variance that we're seeking here is for the roof deck above there, which is going to be access, accessed from the second floor of the 2126 Cypress property, you know, just to the right of there on, on, that, on that image on the screen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from the committee? Any other committee questions? No. Do I have hear questions from the public? If you're a member of the public and you'd like to speak about this, uh, please raise your hand and the raise hand feature. So Mr. Jeffrey Mainland, uh, can I invite you to speak and just please introduce yourself and as a reminder, tell us your address. Thank you, I'm Jeff Mayland. I live at 2123 Delancey. I'm the Western neighbor to 2121 Delancey. I just want to register my opposition to this project and point out that 2126 Cypress already has a roof deck under construction. 2120 Delancey also has a roof deck. Uh, so there's no unnecessary hardship here that requires building a third roof deck for these properties. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do I hear any other members of the public who wish to express any thoughts uh, or questions regarding uh, this particular project? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Vince Tseng. I'm, I'm, I'm Vince Tseng. Uh, I am also a resident at 2123 Delancey, uh, the Western neighbor, um, uh, along with uh, Jeff Mainland. Um, and I, I have a question about um, why the property, um, it, it is, is the roof deck to service the needs of uh, 21, uh, 21 Delancey, um, or is it to service the needs of some other property altogether? And and um, how that um, should be treated by um, the, the, the committee. Thank you, Vince, for your question. That's a great question. So initially, it's the, the use is going to be service for the 2126 Cypress Street property. Um, initially, the idea was to have a, a carport um, and then to do a green roof you know, for, for viewing from the second floor of the Cypress Street property from the windows looking towards the east from that property. Um, and then subsequently, we, we sort of developed th this concept that um, it would be accessible. So it could be a sort of a green space, green roof. That's also a, an outdoor sort of garden with a seating area for our client. There is no, there is no point of access for this roof deck from 2121 uh, Delancey. It's, it's solely for the use uh, and access for and from 2126 Cypress Street. All right. Well, I would like to also register my uh, objection on, on the grounds of um, it not being a hardship. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other uh, members of the public who wish to speak on this project? No. Oh. Well, uh, then I would like to thank all everyone who has spoken about this project. I'd like to thank the presenters for a very clear uh, and focused presentation. Um, and I would like to thank uh, everyone for a clear discussion uh, on this project. So thank you very much. Thank you for having us. We're now going to move for our final property. And this is 1746 Lombard Street. And I'm going to read uh, the specifics of the property. So 1746 Lombard Street. Uh, is an application for demolition of existing roof deck access structure and erection of addition above existing at attached structure to include two roof decks for single family household living. For one interior off street accessory parking space as previously approved. Size and location is shown on application plan. And the refusal is for first um, dimension standards for lower density residential districts Rear, set, rear yard setback of addition required seven feet, proposed zero feet. Second, dimensional standards for lower des density residential districts, height allowable 38 feet, proposed 53 feet, six inches. And third, roof deck setbacks, reason for refusal, whereas roof decks must be set back at least five feet from the extreme front building line, but three of the proposed roof deck setbacks are not compliant. 
So now I would like to turn the presentation over to representatives of the property. Good evening. Uh, my name is Al Fascaldo. I'm the attorney for the applicant, Harry, Dill Harry Dillon Madonna, who's here with me this evening, as well as uh, also present as our architect, Ian Toner. Uh, we were, we appeared before the committee at your last meeting on, on May 24th um, and spent a lot of time discussing the project and, and, the, and the request for the relief uh, and the reasons for that uh, relief. Uh, we also listened intently to uh, members of the, uh, the committee and also the neighborhood um, you know, about the concerns that, that they had, um, which really fell into two, two main buckets, you know, that being uh, the height of the of the fourth floor addition proposed, um, as well as uh, the the wall, um, media wall, I guess we would call it, uh, that was on the uh, proposed replacement roof deck. Um, a lot of discussion about that 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 wall and its purpose, and you know, then the focus shifted to uh, a television that was to be on that wall. But I mean, in reality, that that wall with the pilot house not being a part of this uh, roof deck application. The, the, the wall, the main purpose of that wall is to support um, uh, a retractable awning, a retractable shade. So with, with, those, with those comments in mind, um, we went back and, and, and took a look at the proposal and, um, and refined it. And uh, Ian Toner is here uh, this evening and he'll be able to share his screen and, and, and walk everyone through those changes. We'd be happy to go back through the, uh, you know, the bulk of last month's presentation, but given the um, you know, the length of the hearing tonight, um, you know, I don't think that's necessary unless the board uh, would, would like us to. Um, no, I would, I, would, I, would, I would agree with that. Thank you. And I think focusing on the changes sounds like an excellent plan. Okay. Um, so before Ian does that, I just want to also bring to the board's attention. I know uh, the committee has the copies of materials we submitted, but um, mm -hmm. also to, just to highlight in that, in that packet of materials were, were um, you know, uh, neighbor sign-off sheets um, you know, and in those in those sign off sheets, you know, there are uh, at least 20 neighbors who are in support of this of this project and, and the requested relief. So um, I know there are some neighbors who had concerns, but uh, the majority of the people, the vast majority of the people that that um, uh, Mr. Madonna spoke to uh, were, were in favor of the project. And so I'll let Ian you know, walk us through the modifications to the to the plan and, and, and the rationale and the reasons behind that. And then we're happy to answer any further questions that the, uh, the committee of the neighbors may have. Thank you. Um, so a focused presentation will be wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Toner. Absolutely. So um, can everyone hear me okay? We can hear you just fine. Great, okay. So just to get oriented, um, this is the site plan, Lombard Street on this side, 18th Street on this side. Um, this is the area of the um, addition. Uh, there's a roof deck at the current roof height and a roof deck being proposed on top of the addition. Um, so what we've done is we have reduced the size, the height of the addition by 18 inches. Um, so bringing the total height down a bit. And then um, we've also um, change, I guess this might be the best view, although not a wonderful one. I'll get a better view later. But um, instead of a solid wall here with a TV and a retractable awning, we're proposing just a frame. So two posts and a beam across the top to hold the awning. The TV is not going to, there's not going to be a wall there for a TV anymore. So there will just be a place to hold this awning um, so that uh, there can be some shade up on the roof. Um, and you can see it from the side here. Uh, I believe we have some drawings a little further into the set here that might uh, make that a little clearer. So when I zoom in, we're looking from the south and this is the addition uh, coming up above the, the neighboring house here to the south. Here's the frame that we're proposing um, you can see the glass railing for the roof deck through here, but this will be an open view through this frame as opposed to a solid wall. That height that was specified in the refusal was the height to the top of this wall because it was solid. So now that it is open, they will consider it a pergola. It won't contribute to the height of the building. The height will be back down at roof level here. Now that will be the new measure of the height of the building in the uh, 
in the proposal. So um, just to clarify, because that sounds brutally high, that number on the refusal, but that is not, that's the height to the, it is a real number and it is the height to the top of the wall that we proposed, but it's not the height to here. Um, it was the height to up up here. And so EPA, I think that- EPA, so with, with, with that adjusted with that adjusted height, now that it's a, a frame, what what is what is the, uh, the the height variance that we're pronouncing? I knew you would ask me that. So now we're down at forty three feet. Okay. So it's wonderful. Uh, Thank so you. Yeah, right. So the so the allowable height is thirty eight, and we're requesting a five foot a five foot variance. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Are there other points that you would like to make for our, uh, the presentation tonight, clarifying changes to your, uh, to your particular present, to your presentation, to your project? No. Okay. Well, thank you for a focused presentation. I'd like to now turn to the members of the committee for any questions and Ben Zuckerman, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, I have one quick question. Do you have a hearing date yet at the ZBA? We 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 uh, postponed the hearing. It was originally scheduled for the twenty second of June, um, so we we continued that, and we're waiting for our new date. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Do we have other questions from the committee? I just have one question, please. Uh, the third. The third down refusal, whereas the roof decks must be set back at least five feet for an extreme front of the building line, but three of the proposed roof tests are set back or non-compliant. Are we here strictly, I don't want to be succinct, strictly to talk about just the 38 feet versus what you now propose, 43 feet, and the other first and third are um, existing? The, 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 uh, the, 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 Rear yard setback. The, the the property is built out to the lot lines, so there there is there is no rear yard. So the, right. the variance comes from the fact that you're going a little bit higher. Yeah. All right. So that's what I thought. So the last time, so the number one and number three are just as is, and we're only dealing with the the, the second one. Like, I think with the with the with the third with the third variant, Ian, if you correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that the ex, the existing deck is set back. Um, uh, three feet and we're going, we're pushing it out to the edge. Is that right? Right, so on the Lombard Street side, the existing deck is set back. The, this dashed line represents the existing roof deck. So the existing roof deck is set back three feet, two inches on the Lombard side and four feet, two inches on the 18th Street side. And we're just proposing to move the glass rail, to do a glass railing and to move it to the perimeter of the building. Oh, that's okay. Now I now I now I remember. So you are moving the roof deck closer to the street lines. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any? Is there any other uh, member of the committee who has a question uh, for our presenters for this case? No. Do we have any members of the public who wish to have a? who wish to ask a question about this case. Uh, and if so, please raise your hand and I'll call on you in the order that I see. Mr. Mike Shade, apologies for any mispronunciation. And again, to, as a reminder, please state your name and also let us know, uh, please state your address. Mike, <coughs> excuse me, Mike Shade, 1733 Naudane Street. I spoke about this project last month and uh, appreciate that the owner and architect have made some modest revisions to it. Um, I'm still quite convinced that it is quite bulky for this site, quite high, and I'm specifically jacked to the fourth floor roof deck. Um, I personally would say, fine, don't worry about the rear yard setback, fine. Don't worry about the side yard setback, fine. Allow your existing third floor roof deck to approach the Lombard and South Street, South 18th Street carpet wall. But to see another roof deck, approximately 20 by 20, whatever size it is on top of this fourth story addition to me seems to be too much for this particular site. And I'm okay. for it. Thank you, Mr. Shade. So you, uh, you have expressed your opposition. That's very clear. Um, Mr. Jim Richardson. 
Uh, can I, yeah, mm -hmm. can you hear me? Yes, please. Uh, please go ahead and state your address, your name and address uh, for the yeah, committee. I'm Jim, and, mm -hmm. I'm Jim Richardson. Uh, I am a, an owner and resident at 1728 Lombard Street. So we're about eight or nine doors down uh, from the corner. <clears throat> I am here to object to the project. Uh, there's an overarching concern for me, which is I don't, I don't get the uh, claim of hardship at all. Uh, I want to, uh, to echo Mike Shade's concern about the fourth uh, floor, you know, the fourth story and the roof deck on top of that. Uh, it's still a significant change from the context of the, of the neighborhood. Uh, we live in one of 10 uh, townhouses that, are, uh, that begin adjacent to the, uh, let's see, east side of this particular property. There are 10 townhouses. They're identical. The roof line, the cornice, whatever you call it, uh, is, is uniform all the way down for 10 houses. The shutters, the windows, everything is uniform. Uh, it's, a, it's a very presentable neighborhood that way. Uh, the house already represents, the house on the corner in question, already represents a uh, change to that. But the addition of this big fourth story black box sitting on top of that and very visible from every place in the neighborhood uh, completely breaks up the context of the neighborhood. Um, I don't like the way it looks. Uh, I think it's it's an ugly addition to the neighborhood, and it's okay, certainly well, Mr. Richardson, a visible I just one. Want, I just want to so I appreciate the points on the context and thank you. Uh, it sounds like you're also objecting to the height uh, and objecting to the hardship concerns. We are we're not here to talk about the design, although although I will note that. I have heard you express a concern regarding the height as well as the fourth story plus roof deck and the question about hardship, which I understand you don't see. Yeah, I don't see it at all. There's already a roof deck. This house has, oh. indoor, this house has indoor parking, which none of the houses on our side of Lombard Street has. Okay, so uh, thank you so much. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Richardson, I need to interrupt you. Uh, we need to focus on the specific uh, refusal and the specific topics at hand. So the indoor okay, party hardship is, is, is a the matter hard, for... question of hardship. Mm -hmm. Is the question of hardship part of that? I think that we're talking about the specific application and the specific refusal at this time. Okay, so, so hardship Mr. doesn't count at all? No, uh, I am hearing, we are discussing, so I'm hearing your concerns, and you, we certainly are, inter are interested in hearing your concerns regarding your understanding of hardship as it relates to the application and the refusal. And okay. what I'm hearing you say is that you don't see a hardship uh, uh, as related to the specific topics that we are discussing at this time. No hardship in any way, shape, or form. This okay, is a single person. You. This is a single person home, in a in a set of family houses. It's already bigger than everything else in the neighborhood. It's already bigger than everything else in the neighborhood, and okay. the and the height. What? Let me ask a really quick question. The mm -hmm. existing height is what? I, I don't want to talk was... about thirty eight feet. I want to talk about the existing height. So the existing height is roughly 30 and a half feet okay, to the top so of the parapet call it 31 feet okay so you're going up you're going up 12 or 13 feet from what's existing that's too much for me okay well thank you for that clear statement a clear statement of opposition mr tom bartlett can we turn to you please and again i want to I want everyone to have the opportunity to, to express their point of view. In addition, we do want to be focused. We're cognizant of the time. And we, uh, as the committee, after we have this meeting, will need to meet in closed session. So again, repeating what I had said at the beginning of the meeting, we, if anyone ha uh, would like to repeat a previous comment, they can do so very briefly, expressing their support for the previous comment. Um, or their echoing of the previous comment, we ask that questions be limited to new questions. Mr. Bartlett. Um, 
I spoke last time mm -hmm. and I appreciate that they have tried to reduce the height by 18 inches. I agree that it's still compared to the houses on the street is a big black box on a huge house that breaks the, the skyline and changes the nature of the block. Um, I guess I'm not allowed to talk about hardship. I wasn't aware of that issue as much last time to bring it up, but- um, Excuse I, me, sir, if, if, I can, if I can clarify, forgive me for interrupting, you certainly and everyone else may certainly talk about hardship. I ask that we limit our conversation, uh, opposition or in favor or hardship or any other topic to the specific matters at hand. What is inside that property is not what we're talking about. So please, uh, okay. I'd like All to right. turn the floor back to you. Thank you, fair enough. Um, then I guess my, my objection is simply to the size of this and the effect in the neighborhood and the precedent mm -hmm. of a fourth story on, on this block. Um, if I can share screen, I'll show you a picture of uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I think that we're going to limit sharing screen to presenters. I believe that, the, that we have Fair a enough. sense of okay. the uh, area and all the committee members are always asked to view the properties prior to our meeting. So I appreciate your enthusiasm and thank you for that. I think we have a sense of, of the context. I'll, I'll let it go with that then. Thank you very much, sir. And I've understood that you very clearly oppose this particular project. And, and I would add that I did not try to collect. The, mm -hmm. the letter that the attorney sent mm -hmm. to me had a place to sign for support and a place to sign check off for non-opposition. So uh -huh. I never returned it because there was no place to, to mention opposition on the sheet he gave me. I did okay. collect 16 signatures from neighbors adjacent mm -hmm. and um, who were very much in opposition. And I know I would have collected many, many more on my block um, had I pursued it before, before yeah. I was persuaded we didn't have a chance. Okay, well, thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Uh, uh, may I turn now to Ms. Liz, Liz Lundby. May I ask you to unmute and to state your name and address for the committee, please? Thank you. Uh, my name is Liz Lundy. I live at 1742 Lombard, so I'm two properties away from the property in question. Mm -hmm. And the property in between us is a rental property. So the owners there have um, different things at stake, different interests than we do that live in this neighborhood. And I think that this addition, I wanna echo my two neighbors that it changes the character of the neighborhood. Um, wanting a bigger house is simply not a hardship. And I'm concerned that allowing exceptions to zoning, um, in fact, either changes the zoning by setting a new precedent or is blatantly unfair to anyone who comes after who doesn't have the wherewithal or the lawyers to fight to get that exception. And so we buy our houses with the understanding that zoning laws protect our neighborhoods and we need to be able to sell our houses with those same expectations. It's the only way that we protect both our neighborhoods and our investments in this neighborhood. We've, my husband and I have lived here for over 20 years and we've had to fight other people that have wanted fourth stories. And it simply doesn't feel fair to make exceptions to zonings because someone wants more space. Okay. I'd like more space. Thank you. You've been very clear. Um, do you have any additional points that you wish to make? Oh, no, sorry, I should have unmuted. That's quite okay. Thank you. Um, now, do we have any other members of the public who wish to make it, who wish to second or echo any points or make any new questions? Make any new points. Okay, I believe that we've heard everything uh, from all parties then. So I want to thank the presenters uh, for having presented on this project, 1746 Lombard. Thank you for your presentations. Thank you to the members of the public. At this time, we're going to end the public portion of uh, the zoning committee meeting and the committee will now move into closed session. So thank those you. of you, thank you. So those of you who are not members of the committee, please feel free at this time to exit our meeting.
All right, and I will stop the recording. I think Liz Lundy needs to be moved to the waiting room. Uh, and I will stop the recording. And I think